Ike, can you hear me? Hold on, you're still, Ike's still connecting the audio. All right, Ike, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, <laughs> awesome. See my Steeler logo, Ike? I forgot see. To talk, forgot to talk about that the other day. So, um, Ike's a big football fan, and for years he's been happy when the Steelers lose for unknown reasons, but we'll move on from that. Um, all right, we got a bunch of questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind people the order as we get started. We'll go Jordan, Mike, Eliav, Zach, Michelle, Mark, Jeff. We'll get you all in, but uh, Jordan, Mike, Eliav, let's go ahead and lead us off. All right. Congratulations, Ike. Uh, I guess just to start things off, what was your reaction when you heard your number was going to be hung up in the rafters? Uh, very excited. Really excited. Um, I don't think I could really put it into uh, words how I feel. Just uh, a lot of excitement, a lot of emotion. And just to follow up real quickly, uh, what legacy do you feel like you left with the Sun Devils when your time wrapped up in Tempe? Uh, I would like to think I was just, uh, you know, a, a relentless player on the floor. You know, I gave it my all and uh, off the floor, I would like to think I was a pretty cool guy to, to talk to and to, to, to be around. You know, legacy, but when you're in the midst of it and you're obviously having success, I mean, as a player, is there something you ever thought about, like, as you kind of looked up and saw some of the numbers up there that you ever thought your number would be up there at ASU? Nah, not as I was going through it. Um, that just never really crossed my mind, to be honest with you. I, I was doing an interview with somebody the other day and they asked me a similar question. And I was like, when I came into college, I didn't really have any expectations. You know, uh, I didn't I, I didn't say, well, I want to be all 10 or this or that. I just wanted to come in. I knew there was a lot of seniors. So I just wanted to contribute and have a solid freshman season, hopefully go on to have a four-year career and see what happens after that. You can think of that just really stood out to you in your time at ASU that just shine, whether team accomplishment, personal accomplishment, something in practice, just any memories from that? Any memories from my time at ASU? Three moments. Uh, well, for me, I guess the top moment is always going to be uh, my freshman year selection Sunday, um, sitting down and uh, hearing our name called because uh, we didn't know if we were going to get in. We lost a game to Oregon in the Pac-10 uh, Pac tournament. So, you know, we were kind of on edge when we were watching selection Sunday and uh, to hear our name called was awesome. Like overall, Obviously, you mentioned your career. You've been all over the place, a long basketball career. How did your time at ASU prepare you for your life experiences? Um, you know, my time at ASU, I had a lot of fun, but uh, basketball-wise and stuff, uh, especially uh, the conditioning and stuff, it was really tough. Like, when I think about, like, my career and some of the things that I've had to do conditioning-wise, I mean – ASU really ranks up there. So I think the mental aspect of it, Coach Evans always preached mental toughness. He just always wanted to see who was mentally tough. So um, through all the adversity that I've had throughout my professional career, I really think uh, the mental toughness that he instilled in me really helped me get through some of these really tough times that I faced in my professional career. Hey, I, going back to your freshman season, uh, back to Selection Sunday, then you get to play Memphis and you come out with your 22 points. As you look back on your career, how special of a game was that for you? That was a really special game. I mean, especially as a basketball junkie growing up, uh, especially in high school, the closer and closer I got to college, I used to really watch a ton of basketball and used to always watch Selection Sunday and always dreamed of uh, being a participant. So to be able to... Um, Fortunately, we played in uh, Oklahoma City, which was close to uh, Texas. So my parents were able to come, have my high school coach there. So it was just a really awesome, awesome experience. Um, it's my turn, right? Okay. Um, I'd like to know, uh, Ike, about your kind of your loyalty to this program. It seems like you've always been a uh, proponent of the Sun Devil program, even though you grad, you know, were several years ago. So can you talk about kind of your loyalty to the program and just being invested in it, even since long after graduating? 
Well, I owe so much to the program. You know, they helped jumpstart my uh, pro career, gave me the opportunity to, uh, opportunity to be a pro. So forever indebted to ASU. Um, and they've always taken care of me. Um, even though Coach Evans and his staff is gone, uh, Sendex staff was good, and now Coach Hurley's staff. So uh, I really love coming back to the university. I love watching the games. Uh, I, I love some of the teams that they've had in the past, especially um, – you know, the team that started 12 and 0, you know, that was a lot of fun uh, to be able to brag to people and, you know, because they, they got so high in the rankings. I mean, that was like all of our all of our dreams when we came to ASU was to, to have that type of impact. So, um, yeah, you know, the university's always been good to me. So I'm an ultimate supporter. And it's always cool to come back and see Doug. One follow up question too. Um, I heard you're you're really you know a proponent of the other sports too. So what other Sun Devil sports do you follow? Are you really invested in? You follow closely? Football, big football fan, huge football fan. So that that right there. Um, women's basketball too, but uh, I would say uh, the football team is just always like every year. I always have my expectations set. Um, if anybody bets me when it comes to the football team, it's just a no brainer. So, um, yeah, huge fan of Sunday Night football. Mark McLoon, you have any? I do. Thanks for the time today. And, uh, sorry, I can't see you. Something's wrong with my, uh, with my, with my, uh, camera here. So Ike, uh, great to see you. Um, are you, are you done playing? Uh, I'm not done playing, actually. Um, I'm kind of, uh, I, I just finished, uh, we had a COVID shortened season in Mexico. So it ended um, right like at the beginning of December. Um, and then I did some stuff with the national team. So uh, I'm still working out, still training hard every day, um, looking for the next opportunity. But uh, yeah, I have not officially retired yet. Could you see yourself one day get it into coaching, perhaps maybe even college coaching? Um, I could, I could just because I do enjoy the game of basketball and, and at this uh, stage of my career, I do enjoy uh, teaching the young uh, players, uh, different nuances of the game. So yeah, I mean, it's not out of the uh, realm of possibility. And when you think about the guys that you're joining in, in the rafters that, that, you know, your, your numbers going up there with, what do you think when you see, James's number up there and jumping Joe Caldwell and Fat Lever and just the, some of the conversations you've had with the guys over the years. What's it mean to be in that fraternity? That's uh, awesome. Uh, I mean, you're talking about some of the greatest players to ever play basketball. You know, James, James is going to go down as one of the greatest offensive threats that the world has ever seen. So, um, you know, Fat Lever, Byron Scott, Alton Lister, I mean, the list goes on. So to be able to be in the same breath of those guys is a, uh, Really amazing and something I never, ever would have imagined happening. Appreciate the time. Absolutely. Thank you. Jeff, you got anything? Yeah, I'll throw one at you. Um, i just uh, curious. Uh, you've crisscrossed the world, really. Uh, mm -hmm. What is your favorite place to have played in, and where would Tempe rank as part of that worldwide list that you've been on? Um, favorite place? Um, well, I would say, uh, Puerto Rico I had a lot of fun in Puerto Rico. I mean, uh, Island life is, is, is really fun. Uh, but Tempe always ranks number one. I mean, you can't beat Tempe. Yeah, you can't beat Tempe. I mean, Tempe is just, I just, I can't say anything bad about Tempe. All of my memories of Tempe are just positive, uh, from the weather to, uh, little restaurants and stuff that I used to go to. So Tempe is always going to be tops. How, how long did it take you to make a decision that you weren't going to play anymore? How tough, how tough a decision was that for you? Uh, are you talking about retiring? Uh, yeah, if, if that's where you're headed. Well, well, see, yeah, I'm still I'm still up in the air. I, ha I haven't quite made a decision yet because I'm still actively like training. I still work out and train hard every day as if I'm preparing for a season. So um, if something comes along that's worthwhile, I'll definitely do it. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. So I haven't officially pulled the plug on the career yet. All right. Good. Mike, go ahead. 
You mentioned Coach Evans, but what did he mean to – I mean, how often did you – the words? Uh, say that again. Your phone's cutting out. What did he? What did Coach? You mentioned Coach Evans. What did he mean to your career? And how often did in the beginning did you keep in touch with them, or how long have you kept in touch with them for? Uh, Coach Evans meant a lot to my career because he was one of the first people to really believe in me. Uh, he offered me a scholarship early, and if I'm looking back at it at that time, I don't know if I would have offered myself a scholarship. Um, but he saw something in me, and he always believed in me. He always pushed me to be great, even from the first practice you know, to my last practice, you know, he just always pushed me to be great. That was the one thing I always said, you know, be great, be great, be great. And, um, you know, I just really believed it, man. He was a good motivator for me. And uh, definitely stay in touch with Coach Evans, especially now he's the, I think he's the assistant AD at SMU. So that's, you know, in my backyard. So uh, I go down and I watch SMU games from the time and I see him and his wife. So uh, big, big thing in my career. All right. I have a question real quick. Go ahead, Michelle. I, I, are you still living pretty much full-time in Texas, but you still have a place out here in Arizona? Um, as of, as of Probably as of the last, probably like two years, I've probably been in Arizona more um, than I've been in Texas. So, I mean, I have a place in both. Um, I come here, uh, hang out with my friends, and uh, try to attend games when I can. Um, but yeah, so I'm back and forth between here and Texas. What city specifically? In Texas? No, here. Are you in Scottsdale or? No, I'm in, I'm in actual Phoenix. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gabe, you had one? Yeah. Like, uh, I know Doug has been telling us for the last couple of years that your jersey going up uh, was only a matter of time and just a matter of getting you back to Tempe and, and setting it up. Um, but kind of knowing that that was going to be something that is on your radar for the last couple of years, when you actually see it go up on Saturday night, do you think there'll be tears? Uh, I hope not. I hope not, but uh, you know, it might happen. I don't know. I hope not, but I would be extremely happy. Um, it'd be good to see a bunch of old faces and to get back into the arena and step on the floor again. Um, just going to be really, really, really happy. So I can't tell you what happened. I hope I don't cry, but, you know. <laughs> Jordan, what do you got? Uh, Ike, just for all the places that you've played, where do you think you had to have the biggest adjustment or where did the, the game translate differently or things like that? Where What was kind of the, the biggest culture shock for you of all the places you've played in? I think overseas in general, basketball is different. Um, you know, uh, when you play, especially when you play, like when you start getting into the Olympic uh -huh. competition, that stuff is uh, definitely uh, different. Uh, but I would say the initial adjustment was my first year after leaving the NBA, which was China. So um, everything was different just from I'm used to we're hopping on private jets and staying in five-star hotels and you got equipment managers that handle all of your stuff. Well, when I got to China, it was like going back to square one where you got to pack your own stuff and there's no equipment manager, there's no equipment room, there's no practice facilities and uh, stay all day in the airport and you might not stay in the best hotels. So that was like a whole adjustment that I had to get used to. Cool. All right. Anybody else? Awesome. Hey, thanks, Ike. No problem. Thank you, guys. And uh, I hit the record button a, a couple of questions in. So when you get the recording, sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> but okay. you'll get it. All right. Thanks, gang. All right. Thanks, thanks Ike. Thanks, Doug. Thank thanks, you. guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Doug. <laughs>